today. Uh, we're going we're gonna to take a look at setting up an equilibrium expression that is not homo that is not homogeneous equilibrium. Something that's not homogeneous equilibrium is where you've got a mixture of solids, liquids, and gases. So if we have this reaction take place, PCL5, solid, react and make PCL3 liquid plus Cl2 gas, and we had to set up an equilibrium expression with this, we can't use a solid or liquid. So just be chlorine? No. Nope. So the way you'd set it up, it's reactants over products. So it'd be Cl2 in brackets. The brackets means concentration. And that's equal to K. And that's all you do. Does that make sense? So you don't include the solid or liquid. Now, the ones you did yesterday, they were all in gases, so you included them all. Okay? Another example. No solids or liquids are included in an expression. Okay, so if you have this, what would be your expression? What is, uh, yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's go for sulfate. Let's go for over sulfate. Over CU. Yeah, what is this over sulfate? Yeah, what is yeah. This whole thing is a solid. Oh, oh, oh okay. H2O no, to the fifth. It can't be yeah. equilibrium with solid. Yeah, but this isn't that equal. K doesn't equal it. K can't equal solid or liquid gas. Is that even a reaction? No gas. The yep. Gas, H2O. It's literally just gas. It's no, but the thing on the wait, left. Yeah, that's why you don't put it in. Ice evaporating. So the water. That's all it is. Yeah, it's, de it's just, just dehydration. It's a reaction. Okay, it is a reaction wait, because it is. You need to put it. You have to put in energy to take the water out. Though. This is just to hydrate. So every crystal, every mole of CuSO4 will have five moles of water around, around it. it, or every molecule of this. We'll have five water molecules. <coughs> That's fine. Okay. So questions about that? Pretty easy. Just wanted to show you those examples to go by. All right. Next thing we're going to talk about is called a reaction quotient. Now, now a reaction quotient is a picture of a reaction at any part of it at the initial phase or final phase or in between phases of reaching equilibrium. So reaction quotient would be a value that if you come up with a value of the reaction quotient and it's the same as K, it's at equilibrium. If the reaction quotient, you have a large Q versus K, then it's going to shift back to, um, it's going to shift in a way in which to produce more reactants. If it's small, it's going to shift in a way in which to make more products. Okay? So we're going to set up a couple of these so that you can kind of see how they work. I want you to turn in your book to page 525. 525.
Okay, so on this one, we're given a reaction um, that takes place that's going to be um, N2 plus H2 gives you NH3. And these are all gases. Okay, so there's our reaction. So what's the expression going to be? K is equal to... Okay, so then what we're going to do to find out where the reaction is... We're going to go ahead and plug these numbers in, and we'll get what's called uh, a reaction quotient, or Q. So we'll need somebody to plug these in and tell me what the number is for, for A. Times 10 to the 7. What'd you get? 1.3 times 10 to the 7. To the 7? Yes. Okay, so then a lot of times they'll tell you what the... Um, equilibrium constant is. So the equilibrium constant for this reaction, where it should be at equilibrium, is 6 to the minus second. So you just plugged in those... I don't know, I'm just trusting that he plugged them in. That's, that's right. Okay? It's, it's in the book. You did it all on time. Yeah, that's mental So if you plug those old numbers in, you get this Q. And then you go, wait a second, Q is really, really big. So that means that my products are really, really big. I have way too many products. And so for it to get back to equilibrium, what's going to have to happen for this to get back to equilibrium? Get back to the 6 times 10 to the minus second. You need more products. If we have more products, this number gets bigger, oh, wait, no, and this more. gets smaller. Okay, now just this way. The thing is, we calculate it, we do it with these numbers, and we get a very big number. That means it's past equilibrium. It means that we have way too many products associated with equilibrium and way too few reactants at that point. So we've got it, everything will eventually get back to equilibrium if you keep the conditions the same. Keep the pressure, temperature the same. This is a situation where what happened, they put all these ingredients in and they said, reaction go. And the reaction goes, it has to eventually get to this number. It's going to get there at some point in time. So for it to get to that number, it has to shift which direction? So shifting, when I say shifting, where are you going to have a bigger rate? Going left or going right to get left. to your equilibrium? Left. left, correct? So that means that you're going to have to have it proceed to the left more than it proceed to the right. And then eventually it's going to equal out at values, these values here, are going to be when you plug them in, should get you six to the minus second once they readjust. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's just do one more here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and not re have to rewrite this. So, so now we have a situation where we'll we'll do B. So B, you have point zero 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 two. And you have point one five, and I'm doing it not in its scientific notation, which I think you guys can help. help me. And you have point three five four. When you plug those in, you get a reaction quotient that would be what? What would it be? Six point oh one times ten to the so that one's at equilibrium, right? So basically, it's just rounding, and 
So that one's at equilibrium. Okay, we better do, we'll just do one more just to see, see it affect. So, Wait, would you know to change to that? It told me in the book what the new values were. On B. Okay, on B. Right. So, that reaction's at equilibrium. So, are those concentrations going to change? No. They're never going to change. Okay? Unless I introduce more ammonia. If I introduce more ammonia, which direction will it proceed? Right. No, left. To the left. Because mm -hmm. then we've got a bigger K constant. Uh, let's say I want to produce more ammonia. Let's say I'm a, uh, I I'm a chemical engineer and I want to produce more ammonia because that's my product. What am I going to introduce? Well, more yeah, nitrogen and, and more, hydrogen. more hydrogen. And then I'm going to produce more ammonia. Okay? And so we're going to get into later on, we're going to talk about the Chat Delay's principle. It's my favorite principle just because of the name. Le Chat Delay. Okay? Ah, yeah, Le Chat Delay. Right? So, that one's, a, and it's a fun one to experiment with because you don't do any calculations, you don't weigh things out. You just look, you just look at what's happening when you introduce something into cold, hot, increase pressure, decrease pressure, add more concentration of one thing or another, and it's a fun lab. It's, it's a pain to set up, but it's a fun lab to do. Okay? So then, the next one, and I know you guys are just reading these numbers, which is okay. Less work for me and less work for you. Okay? So this is point zero 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 one. This one is 5, and this is point zero 0.01. Now, when that one was plugged in, and you, they give you an answer, what's the answer? 2.0 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, so that one is lower than our constant, so we're going to have to produce more product, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to have to get this bigger. So we're going to have to, so it's going to shift which way? Right. Shift to the right. Okay, it's going to have to shift to the right. What's that one song, shift to the left, shift to the right? To the left. Okay, that's a good song for this one. Huh? To the left, to the left. Okay. So, questions you have with that. Make sense? So there'll be some questions they'll say you have to figure out is it shift to the left, to the right, or is it at equilibrium, okay? All right, now we get into ice. ice. Okay? So I need you to, to um, turn to page 526. And they don't use ice, so you can follow what they have on page 527. That'd be fine, but I'm going to use... Yep, I'm going to use ice. And that was an old... I first started teaching, that came out. What year was that? It's like 89. 89, 90. Vanilla ice? When I first started teaching, that was popular. I'm pretty sure if you look it up, I bet you came out... The album came out in 88 or 89. But it got big in the two. Alright. No, it's big in the old It's a classic. Same with Mike Jackson. Didn't get big in the 2000s. He didn't get big. He was already big. It's the jeans. Wait, how can you even tell? The jeans are talking to her about it. What year did he say that? What? 1989. Okay. So. I. C. E. Ice is coming. Okay, ice is coming. Beware, ice is coming. So, I is initial amounts. C is change. And E is at equilibrium. So basically what they're going to say is they're going to say, hey, we're going to introduce the reactants and it's going to shift one way or the other. And based upon how it shifts, we're going to be able to determine what the constant is and what the concentrations of equilibrium are. So, the question states, 
At a certain temperature, a one liter flask initially contained 0.298 moles of PCL3. So 0.298 moles, or that would be the same as molarity. 0.298 molarity is what we start out initially of PCL3. Moles over liters. Now, you got to make sure you have to divide by liters. But in this case, it's one liter, so it's the moles. Okay? Then the PCL5, it said, you know, we put some of this PCL5 in as well. And the amount we put in of that is uh, 0.00870. And we don't put any chlorine in. There's no chlorine in. So they put these together, and they say, after the reaction, we measured out the equilibrium concentration of chlorine. And the equilibrium concentration of chlorine is 0 0.002 molarity. So at that equilibrium, the, PC, the Cl2 has a concentration of 0 0.002 molarity. So, based upon what you're given, does that shift left or right? After these two are put in, which way was it shifting to get the equilibrium? Right. Right. To the right. right. That's the only way it could shift to the right because we had zero chlorine, and now we have 0 0.002 moles molarity chlorine. So, the only way it can produce that amount is for these two to react in the way back and forth to get you your chlorine. So the way it shifts is to the way that gets like more concentration? Right. Okay. All right. Now, we can fill in the blanks now because we know the change. What's the change going to be of PCL5? Zero. If it's shifting right, are we subtracting or adding? Minus what? Minus X. Right? If this loses so much, how much does this gain of X? Plus X. Now, if there was 2 in front of that, would be what? Two X. Plus 2X. Two X. It doubles. Wait, so is all the PCL5 going to go to the right? No. No. Now, now, over here, if that was plus X, this would be what? Plus X. Okay. Well, we know what X is, right? X equals what? 0 0.022. 0 0.022 molarity. Okay? So you tell me what the concentration of PCL3 would be. 0.3. Does everybody see? It's 0 0.298 plus X, which would be 0 0.300 molarity. Questions on that? No. And then this would be 0 0.00870 molarity minus X, which would be what? 0 0.06. 0.0067. So how do I find the con how do I find K? So I found the concentrations of PCL5. Now P you just put in that. Right. So PCL5 is equal to 0 0.0067. PCL3 is equal to 0 0.300 molarity. And Cl2 is 0 0.002 molarity. Okay? Then you plug them in to solve for your constant, and it would be <coughs> 0 0.300 0 .00 times 0 0.002 over 0 0.0067. Yep. Okay? And then when you do that, you get 8.96 to the minus 2. So, I'm, I'm not going to do that for you because you've done that, but that's what you plug in. Does that make sense? Okay. How do you find x? How do you find what? Well, if this is zero, and this is plus x, zero plus x, they tell you in the problem that 0 0.002 molarity is the concentration at equilibrium. Okay? So this is what I will give you to do to practice some of those concepts I just went over.
uh, is for you to do page 547, 37, 45, 49 through 52, 54 and 55. Okay, and that's due on Thursday. Okay, mm -hmm. some of you need to get these done now that I have time to check them sooner than get them later. Do you want Duh. Do you want yesterday's turned in? No. Nope. No. Nope. Well, you guys did that in class and helped each other out. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe Friday we can do Le Chatelet's principle. We'll see how things go. If I can get it set up, we might wait till Monday to do that.